So we've got to think about ways to improve our performance levels. Um, so at the start of a month, we can sort of, uh, we did our profiling last week. Now we can sort of uh, reevaluate our goals. Where am I? Where do I want to be? Um, the direction that you're going. So you're clear and you know, you know, the goal could be, so you've got goals around how many goals you want to score uh, in the year, you know, the statistical goals, level you want to play, get in the first team. But things that we can do as well that are, that are really important um, that sometimes can increase our performance level. We talked about fitness testing last week and trying to get into that normative range. And the things that you can do and things that are really important, guys, um, if you're not already doing it and you've got great coaches, you know, I know that they'll be sort of um, talking about these areas too. But just to sort of reiterate, because sometimes we talk about, you know, the things that we can do and, we talk about the, 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 the mental skills side of the game, the mind skills, um, the psychological strategies, but the things that are important, obviously, you know, rehydrating. So are you rehydrating um, after the game? And, and, and I'm not my, in the field of nutrition, obviously, albeit I can read a research paper and I have seen research papers, guys, that would suggest that even 1% dehydration can lead to 20% reduction in performance. So how do I quantify that? Well, the distance covered in the game. So if you run, say, 10,000 meters in a treadmill, you dehydrate it by 1%, you're going to run 8,000. So these are things, guys, that don't take a lot of tweaking to, to get your performance levels higher you know, hydrating. Obviously, every individual is different in terms of, you know, nutritional plan. It's, you know, I, I'm, I'm fully aware of that. Um, how long it takes to recover is based on a number of variables. There's no two players the same. But, you know, after a game, it's, it's really important to sort of to make sure. So the general idea is here is obviously, um, you know, every kilogram you lose in the game, um, you, you want to consume 1.5 litres uh, of, of, of water. But equally, I would strongly recommend to speak to nutrition because you've got to make sure you're replacing electrolytes as well and other things too. Um, that not being my area, um, obviously I can read research papers and performance, it's important. So immediately we have, uh, you know, in place and we get these things in place um, as a foundation. So rehydration. Um, the, the, the ice bath as well is, is another one. Now, obviously, the research, some research says yes, some no. Uh, as a general rule, um, you know, my understanding and, and in my conversations with fitness coaches and people uh, in sports science, so, um, okay, it's, it's like, you know, waist deep, cold water immersion for 10 minutes, um, about 12 to 15 degrees. Now, you know, obviously some players have got access to cryotherapy. Some players have got access to different things to recover. Um, that's something you need to consult with your fitness coaches as well. Um, and that's, that's really important. If there's any reason why you can't sort of do cold water immersion for whatever reason. But there is like research to suggest, guys, that even, even say, um, 12 to, to 15 degrees um, water, um, you know, uh, can be useful. And, and, and I do myself, actually, ironically, um, I do, because I like to go for like long, long, really, really long walks and, and you know, I mean, fit monitor here. And, and I do every, every sort of every morning I can, I'll have like, you know, 12, 15 degree, um, you know, uh, water and just, you know, and, and I find it useful. Maybe it's a psychological thing, I don't know. But I certainly think for players and the volume of, you know, uh, refueling, and this again, it's about sort of speaking to your nutrition, you know, consuming recovery meals as well, one hour post-match. These are important too. Um, you know, obviously it's an individual thing um, and one to sort of speak to nutrition people as well. So these are really important things because basically if you're sort of playing a high volume of games, um, especially if you start playing high volume of games and especially for those you're going to go on tour, um, who are going to play, be playing games uh, in these sort of short windows. And obviously in, in, in Asia, for the guys who are going there, it's going to be really humid too. Um, but equally, it doesn't matter. Even you go to, you know, Europe in winter, um, you know, it's still important too because 
the same sort of things apply uh, in many respects, but you know, you, you make sure you do that. Uh, and, and then refueling again. So two, three hours post-match after the game on the weekend, you, some of you are playing on the weekend. So, you know, you, you, you're recovering with a, um, a, a meal rich in carbohydrates, uh, protein. So that, that could be, you know, um, like, like, a, like, like yogurt with berries, or, or, you know, it, it all depends really. And I think the sort of key thing is sort of tying into nutrition because obviously you sort of tailor it for yourself. I mean, it might be sort of foods that you can or you can't eat or certain things that work for you and, and you know, I'm well aware that there's certain players these days that have like, you know, their own rule, rule specifically to design nutrition based on their own gene. I don't know how accurate that is. It's not my field, but, you know, we, we always look at these things and explore these things because they're useful. Um, sleep is really important too, guys. Um, and that's where I can come in and do come in and we'll send you um, like sort of, you know, useful audios for, for relaxation because sometimes the cortisol levels are high after a game, especially in the evening, guys, and it's not easy to sleep. Um, and, and basically, sleep is really, really important for recovery. Um, it's making sure you get eight to 10 hours. Um, you know, I think some of the ways you can sort of help yourself as well, guys, is avoid screen time before bed. So, you know, before you go to bed, um, try and sort of, you know, put the eye, eye or whatever, phone, whatever you've got, really, laptop, whatever, away for a bit. And just sort of that can help with your sort of sleep quality, um, you know, uh, which is key. But obviously for your recovery, uh, that, that's sort of really important. And, you know, the active recovery for me is a, a, um, a, a, a big one too, um, you know, really important. So whether you sort of you know, go to a beach for a swim or a pool or, you know, riding a bike or, you know, light jogging the next day. Um, you know, the number of options that, that, that are really important and, you know, maybe you can even get a ball and do a, bit, a little bit of light technical stuff on, on, on grass, not on a hard surface is a key. But these are general things, guys, that when we think about our goals, um, you know, the, these are things that we can do to increase our performance level. Now, I, I, I don't want to sort of get too over the top about these things and you've got to do this and you've got to do that. And, you know, I, I want you to feel relaxed and, you know, to feel comfortable and, 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 and not to sort of feel, okay, you know, um, I, I need to get all this early in place. But, but the key is these sort of habits, you know. Um, and, and we sort of talk about our monthly goals, where we want to be, and you take some time to reflect on where you are, performance profile, what you're looking to improve, are you going to be improving them? It's really important we don't neglect things like, you know, rehydration, um, you know, the ice baths, the day after recovery, um, the, the, the refueling post-match, um, you know, making sure you sleep well. That will help you in re your recovery. Um, you know, that alone isn't going to make you a professional player. I'm not suggesting that, um, you know, that on its own. But all things being equal, let's say all of us in, in this group, all hundred of us here are all of the same ability, okay? The ones who do the right things are the ones who are going to stand the better chance over a period of time. Because I know some people have been thinking, well, I know a player who eats this or does this or whatever, but over a test of time. So the ones who sort of rehydrate, we talked about the research, some research, Obviously, so the all research is debatable, but as a general rule, you know, dehydration can really impact performance in a big way. Um, you know, we talk about the research around um, the research around sort of doing things like you know optional ice baths, you know, post uh, mass recovery. There's research suggests that 12, 15 degrees um, for 10 minutes waist deep is useful, and it's about sort of finding your own way. Um, you know, refueling after a game. Uh, you know, getting your nutrition right before a game, uh, making sure you sort of sleep is really important. Getting eight to 10 hours of sleep is really important, um, especially for performance before a game. But, you know, even, even during training sessions to make sure you sort of get, you know, recovery, your muscles got to heal, um, you know, and the active recovery is, is a big deal. So the day after a game, um, it's really important, particularly when sort of you get that delayed onset muscle soreness. 
Um, you know, I mean, you can you can you can rehydrate after a game, two three hours after that game by drinking, say, one point five liters of, of of sort of water or, or like you know, maybe some electrolytes in there as well. Um, based on nutritionist says for each kilogram you lose, um, but the, the the day after is sort of um, you know. Uh, really imperative in terms of doing that recovery, especially if you're sort of playing a midweek game as well. If you're not playing the midweek game, then you want to be able to get straight on it in training. And bit by bit, step by step, um, you know, it, 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 it's really important. You take all these sort of pieces and, and, and it gives you the best chance possible, guys, um, to do the, um, the, 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 you know, to give yourself the best chance possible where all things are well and like I said you want to enjoy the game you want to go out there freedom you want to obviously you know get a balance in life as well and you know enjoy doing things away from the game too absolutely 100% agree with all that um, but equally is the time and place to roll our sleeves up and, and sort of you know um, this is a high performance environment this is a high performance environment um, so we have to build a high performance environment you know some players have been playing recreationally, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's what they, the, the way they want to go in a high performance environment, then we'll have to look at a number of variables to give ourselves the best chance to succeed. But equally, we want to make sure that we don't sort of have burnout and sort of fatigue uh, mentally and physically by sort of putting too much demands on ourselves as, um, as, as players, guys.